say. Do you ever wonder how it is that foresters know how to identify trees just by looking at them quickly? You know, they weren't born with that knowledge. So stay tuned. We're going to discover an interesting and a fun way to learn how to identify trees all by yourself this episode of Believe It or Not. really incredible that Michigan has over 75 tree species in the forest and even more in cities and people's backyards and you can learn to identify them. Yeah, do you remember our first tree ID episode where we started out by defining what a tree is? Yeah, so at least 30 feet tall and a single stem. And that means things like bamboo isn't a tree because that's grass and palm trees really aren't trees because they don't have woody tissue. All right. So then this is definitely a tree. Yeah, I would say that that would qualify as a tree. So let's talk about how to identify trees. People really like to know who's who out there in the forest. That's true. And you can't really understand how a forest works or to begin to manage a forest unless you know who the players are. Yeah, because different trees have different values and different environmental benefits, and knowing who's who and what's what out there can be very helpful. And this is just plain fun. When we're talking about tree species in the Great Lakes area, if you can identify 10 different species, you'll know most of the trees that you'll find in the forest. So Georgia, what do you look for when you try to identify the species of a tree? We can start with bark patterns, leaf bud shapes and colors, opposite or alternate branching, uh, fruits or seeds, and, and... Leaves, Georgia! Leaves! At least during the growing season, that is. To get started with tree identification, it's easiest to start with the conifers. They have leaves too, you know. And there are only about 20 different species of conifers in the Great Lakes area. These are needles, and this is a broadleaf. It's amazing how many things you can see in a leaf that will help you identify a tree species. To start with, leaves come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, not to mention different shades of green. They can be heart-shaped, hand-shaped, round, oval, narrow, wide. Or shiny, dull, even hairy. And look at the edges of the leaves. They can be smooth or have teeth. Those are called serrations. They also can have what foresters call lobes, kind of like your ear, and sinuses, but not like your nose. The leaf attaches directly to a wooden twig. Sometimes there's more than one leaf on the stem called leaflets. If the leaf has more than one leaflet, then we call it a compound leaf. If there's just one leaf, well, that's a simple leaf. Leaves also have different vein patterns to help identify trees, but we're not going to get into that today. So the easiest way to learn tree ID is to hang out with someone who already knows them. However, if you want to learn on your own, you can use a tree ID book and page through lots of pictures. Or we could use what you call a dichotomous key. And what is that? Well, it's just basically taking a sample of a leaf and making comparisons one by one to see what kind of different features we have and narrow down our choices so we can decide what kind of tree we have. So, thinking back earlier, we saw this picture of a baby tree. Well, what kind of tree is that? We could look through the tree ID book for a while or we can try this dichotomous key. Let's give it a try. All right, so we have one sample here and the first thing we look at is the leaf itself. Is it a needle-like leaf or is it a broad leaf? Well, it looks to me like it's a broadleaf. All right, so the next choice is basically, we have either is it a simple leaf or a compound leaf? Well, if you look at the leaf itself, it's just basically one leaf attached to a stem attached to the branch. So that means it's a simple leaf, not a compound leaf. So we don't have to worry about the compound leaves anymore. So what our next choice is basically where those leaves are arranged on the branch. So are they arranged opposite from each other or alternately? Well, it's kind of hard to see in our baby tree, but it turns out that that's alternate branching, not opposite. So we don't have to worry about any trees that have opposite branching. All right, 
Now our next choice is basically looking at the leaf itself. Does it have those lobes like your ear? Or are they basically just straight, you know, there are no lobes, okay? Let me just say no lobes. Well, it looks to me like we have lobes, not this one. So we can not worry about those kind of leaves or that kind of tree, all right? So we have lobes. Now the last thing we decide is basically are they pointed lobes or are they rounded lobes? Well, they look like they're rounded lobes, don't they? So we don't have to worry about pointed lobe trees. So we're down to our final decision. And so what kind of tree is it? Well, it's a white oak. Ta-da! Now I wonder how Brittany's doing with her tree ID book. Oh, yes! I got it! I got it! <laughs> All these great tools can really make tree identification a lot less mysterious. That's right, Georgia. But even with the tools, it takes some practice to learn how to use them, which means you might need to get out in the woods. Or you could start in your own backyard or a local park. All you have to do is look up and look around. Look, there's some trees over there. We could identify those. Or some over there too. Oh yeah, and, and then there's some there too, look. How many trees can you identify? Give it a try, you just might find it's fun. <laughs>